The New York Times is back into their wacky Nazi loving ways. Oh, great lady. How I missed you when you were only partially fascist. The New York Times loves a good Nazi. And I don't just mean this past year. I mean going back to like World War II, like the OG Nazis with the mustaches, not the modern ones with their Chuck Todd goatees. And if any of you out there are still New York Times lovers, then you really just don't watch this. Like, I don't know, go, go back to playing with your Legos or something. Back in 2019, an Australian white supremacist murdered 49 people in New Zealand, as discussed this past week by Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting. At the time, the New York Times correctly stated on his flak jacket was a symbol commonly used by the Azov Battalion, a Ukrainian neo-Nazi paramilitary organization. So, at least in 2019, the New York Times was opposed to neo-Nazis. How good of them. Oh, oh. How noble. They must have read one of those all I really needed to know I learned in kindergarten posters. Yet, that has very much changed this past year. Just last week, the New York Times wrote of that same neo-Nazi organization, commanders of Ukraine's celebrated Azov Battalion have held an emotional reunion with their families in Turkey, Ukrainian officials said, honoring the fighters released from Russian confinement last month. Oh, what a touching heartfelt reunion the Times is heralding for their beloved Nazis. The welcome home cake probably had a swastika made out of marzipan, and, and maybe they had a piñata shaped like MLK or something. And by the way, in case this really needs saying again, you can be against the Russian invasion and against the U.S.-NATO push for a proxy war and against Ukrainian Nazis. You can be against all those things at once because you're an adult with a functioning brain. One hopes. I mean, if you're an American, then there, there's like a 35% chance you're an intelligent, thoughtful. You know what? I don't care anymore. I don't care. But the New York Times, one of the most important papers in the world, has celebrated these Nazis throughout the past several months, reporting things like some of the mobilization activity appears to be centered on the Azov Battalion a unit of the Ukrainian National Guard that has drawn far-right fighters from around the world. And the Azov messages pointed volunteers toward recruitment resources online. I mean, the New York Times is practically serving as an advertisement for neo-Nazi recruits, like a, like a Craigslist post. I'm surprised they didn't end the article with a link to the Azov website and their Tinder account. Do you think white people are toads cool and non-whites are just way sus? then why not come on down to the Azov Battalion Neo-Nazi Pool Party and Barbecue Cook-Off this Sunday in Kiev? Swim chunks optional, but just like the Klan, if your little guy is gonna do something naughty, make sure he's wearing a hood. But what's even scarier is the New York Times' uh, let's say friendliness with Nazis didn't start this year. It goes back generations. In the lead up to World War II, after the world had witnessed the racist, fascist spectacle that was Hitler's 1936 Berlin Olympics, where thousands gave the Nazi salute and the streets were lined with swastikas, the New York Times wrote, Perfect in setting, brilliant in presentation, and unparalleled in performance. The Olympic Games of 1936 stand apart in history as the greatest sports event of all time. I'm not kidding. That's an actual quote from the New York Times about the fascist-led Olympics. And it wasn't like Hitler's anti-Semitism was some kind of secret at that point. He'd already been frothing at the mouth, screaming crazy shit. The 1936 Olympics was a year after Hitler had already stripped Jews of citizenship and forbid them from entering most professions. Through their entire review of the games, the New York Times left out one word that many might view as moderately important. The word Nazi! That's like going to a white supremacist bowling league event and just telling people, it was one of the best bowling experiences I've seen in my life. I feel like you're burying the lead. New York Times writer Frederick Burkhall wrote that spectators of the Olympics would walk away with one impression. It said, this is a happy nation and prosperous almost beyond belief that Hitler is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, political leaders in the world today. And the Germans are a much maligned, hospitable, holy, peaceful people who deserve the best our world could give them. Jesus Christ. 
You and Hitler should get a room, Frederick. I mean, it's one thing to give the world's most horrific psychopath a handy. It's another to do it on the cover of the New York Times. The Times also reassured readers in the lead up to World War II that Hitler would do nothing violent or drastic. They wrote, The composition of the cabinet leaves Herr Hitler no scope for gratification of any dictatorial ambition. Yes, even if he wanted to do something nutty, he couldn't because his cabinet would say, Naughty, naughty, Herr Hitler, what did we say about killing Aussie peoples? I'm totally not kidding. These are real quotes from the New York Times in the 1930s and 40s, except for the naughty, naughty one. And then when the Nazis declared war on the United States and rounded up all American reporters, imprisoning them, the only one not rounded up was the New York Times Berlin chief, Guaido Indiris. The Nazi undersecretary wrote they didn't imprison him because of his proven friendliness to Germany. Then once the Holocaust was ongoing and our government definitely knew about it, the New York Times, despite having a Jewish publisher, did everything they could to ignore and downplay the genocide. In one of the few articles that did cover it early on, they correctly called the murder of 700,000 Jews at the time, probably the greatest mass slaughter in history. However, that sentence was part of a tiny 74-word sub-story buried on page five of the paper. You put the greatest mass slaughter in history, your words, on page five? What the fuck got the cover story? Move over, sliced bread. The invention of something called scotch tape will change the way we stick things together forever. See page B7 for the largest mass slaughter in human history. In 1941, it became clear that the Nazis' plan was to exterminate all the Jews they could, even if they lost the war. This realization was printed in the New York Times in November 14, 1941, but not on the front page. Nope, not a big enough story. It was on page 11. Well, they couldn't put it on page 10. That was the review of the smash Broadway musical Pirates of Penzance. These dancing pirates are the cat's pajamas. Move that killing all the Jews thing to the next page. By May 1945, the Nazis were defeated and the concentration camps were being liberated. The New York Times did cover the liberation of Auschwitz in an extensive article that detailed how 4 million people were murdered in a horrific manner. Yet, the reporter missed one thing in his in-depth report. Even though 90% of those victims were Jews, the reporter never once mentioned the word Jew in the article. Never once. That'd be like telling the history of American slavery and never saying the word black or African. Uh, yeah, so slavery was, it was a lot of folks who had other folks kind of working for them. Uh, uh, not great pay, not, not great pay. Uh, some of the folks who were the owners, the owning folks, they, they had the kind of skin that, uh, that sunburns easier than the other folks. Over the course of World War II, there were thousands of issues of the New York Times. Holocaust-related stories were on the front page exactly six times. And never once was the Holocaust the lead story of the day. So now here in the tail end of 2022, almost 80 years after the Holocaust, the New York Times is still cozying up to Nazis. You would think, maybe, they would have learned their lesson, that being pro-Nazi is way on the wrong side of history. That's it for now, but the most censored news comes out twice a week. Please hit subscribe to find out about every video. Also, you can join the free email list by texting the word redacted to 33777. Keep fighting.